Um, and so what are dependent types? Um, they are types that depend on values. That's what I think most people know. Um, the t there are two main building blocks to them, and the first one is called a sigma type. And it, people often call them dependent, dependent pairs, or sums, which is a, what I consider really bad to be a bad um, name, and that's where the sigma comes from, for sum. Um, and, but they look more like pairs to most people. Um, it, they, they have two components, it's like a Haskell pair, except the type of the second component is determined by the value of the first. And um, it's sort of an interesting dependency. You can uh, write a lot of things with it, including regular sums, um, binary sums. You can, you can have, it, have a sum as wide as you want. Um, the sums being like Haskell either, things like that. And you can write non-dependent pairs with it, um, simply by not depending on the first argument. And um, so here we've defined sigma in, in Agda. You can actually write it in Agda. And so sigma takes basically, um, this is the first element of the pair. And this is the function determining the second element of the pair. So it says, I have a, uh, a type, basically a, a type I'm going to call A, and a function that gives me a type from a value of type A. And this whole thing is set. And it has a constructor called um, colon, which is what you'd expect from maybe Haskell. And uh, again, the constructor is, it simply takes the value of type A for the first argument and a value of type this function applied to the first argument for the second one. And so I can write some ridiculous type like this Q here. And this Q has a type of, the first argument is going to be a natural, and the second argument is going to be determined by whether the first argument is one or not. And if the first argument is one, then it's going to be a natural two, otherwise it's going to be Boolean. Another completely contrived example that um, if we look at this, just looking again at the types of the holes here, um, we have a natural there. And the type of the second component isn't yet determined. And it will be determined by what we stick into the first argument. So if I stick in a, a one, now this guy refines to a natural simply because it, if true, then, then natural. Um, so I can write that in and it would be well typed. However, if I'd gone back and written something else in there, like four, that would be a type bool, and that would also be well typed. Um, and so these, these are fairly useful. You can, um, it's a very basic building block. You can write um, things like Haskell's either, in terms of it. Either is a ty type constructor that goes from a type to a type to a type. Types are called sets, as I said. Um, it takes two parameters, and I'm going to choose bool as my index. Um, it could be any two element type, but bool is convenient. I already had nip and else defined on it. So if the bool is true, then the first type, otherwise it's false. And you can write you know, your injections into the type as left. It's a co-product if you prefer that. Um, your injections in, in by saying true and x, and you see that this is a to either a, b. And this is B to either A, B. And so um, the types just work out. You can decompose it just as you would expect. Um, by pattern matching, and we look at the types in here, we see that we our goal is C here. Um, and we pattern match on these things. And we have an X, which is an A, simply because it's, it's we pattern match on this true. We require the knowledge. Um, that refines the type of X to A. And so we have an F uh, from A to C and an A. So we just apply F to X. <laughs> We get that. And again, we do the same thing here. And now y is now b. So we, we apply g to b and we get g to y, and we get that. And so this all type checks nicely. And um, as, as I mentioned, if you don't make it depend on, if you make the second argument a constant function, it doesn't depend on the type of, on the value of the first argument. You just get a regular non dependent pair. And you can write typical functions on that, like on curry. Um, just by, as you might expect. Um, so the other main building block, um, so we saw the, the, ana, the analogous type to uh, products, and now we're looking at the functions um, in Agda, and they're pi types, and stands for products, because people like to sort of shift them down again. Um, it will give you, um, the type of the codomain is determined by the value of the domain of the function. So. Um, yeah, um, as you might expect, just by sort of symmetry or, or extending the pattern, you can find n-array non-dependent products with this, or non-dependent functions with it, if you want. 
Um, and so um, this is the, uh, sort of a Haskell non-dependent pair, again, defined with one of these functions. Now, this is the pi type. Well, this is the constructor for it. Um, it's a built-in agda, because you can't really define it in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in its own language. We've, uh, we're, we're a function taking a Boolean, but we've given the Boolean a name, x. And now we return um, a value, uh, a type that depends on the, on the value that was passed in. And so we can write on curry again with um, our, our function f is from a to b to c. And we've noticed that simply by bearing the passed in value, we can get a different, um, a different return type out of this. So p of true is an a, and p of false is a b. And so our uncurring works out just fine too. And so um, you can write functions that you might expect. This is function composition. Um, it has a rather scary type in Agda, um, <laughs> which looks like that. Um, you can you might be able to sort of glean the basic structure of, of the same thing uh, of, of the uh, equivalent function composition in Haskell from here. But basically, you have here we have an x. Um, the, the output of this thing is um, it takes a, an A and gives us a C, where C is actually a function from two things. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, you're basically applying these. It's, pass it's passing the dependent, the dependent types along. Um, and it's known to be hairy. I wouldn't expect anyone to really sort of pick it up just by looking at it. But it's, uh, it, it's, it does what you would expect. And, and the definition is just as simple as, as it is in Haskell. Um, and you can write dependent versions of uh, curry and uncurry, and that sort of makes a nice relationship between uh, sigma and pi types. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's still more complicated than curry and, and uncurry in, in Haskell, but um, you still sort of have a, they're, they're clearly sort of flipped versions of each other. Um, so let's go on to um, totality and agda. Why do we care about it being total, and what does it mean? means agda functions either terminate or they don't do so productively. Um, and I'm not going to talk about the latter part, part of that so much, but it's basically you have either recursion or co-recursion in agda. And uh, recursion is what most people think about when they think about recursion. It, um, you know, you're breaking something down and, and you hit a base case and you're done. And um, agda has a, a conservative heuristic for determining that that, that kind of function um, terminates. Um, now it also has co-recursion, which doesn't necessarily have a base case. Um, and that is uh, sort of analogous to laziness, almost, um, in, um, in that you can produce, you can work with infinite streams and things like that. Um, and it has another, another fairly simple heuristic for determining uh, whether those, instead of terminate, because obviously they might not terminate if you're working on an infinite stream, instead of terminate, it needs to be doing something useful work. Um, and that is producing some something um, as it goes along. And so that's what I mean by don't do so productively. But I'm not going to talk about that much more. Um, as I said, um, it, it's, it's conservative in, um, in its estimation. Um, and that's one way of getting around the halting problem. Um, because obviously, it's, you can't determine in general whether a program halts or not. Um, we, uh, we also don't. Um, yeah, you don't you don't often hear something like this, but I mean, any types of typed language is, is making non-trivial statements about a program. And, and well, no, no, they they have to be trivial and susceptible. Well, no, but, but they, all, all you need to do, I mean, you don't you can't be perfectly accurate, but you can you can still make a, make I mean, uh, any type type system is making a statement about a program. Right, and and, and, and it's all it's going to do is going to reject programs which might be other which might actually work um, by being overly conservative. Which means there are trivial theorems that it can prove. By Rice's theorem. Which means they're trivial? Yeah, which means they're trivial. There are lots of interesting trivial theorems as evidenced by the fact that I'm being small. I'm not sure that's I would interpret it that way, but um, <laughs> anyway, let's uh, um, convincing Agda's uh, heuristic uh, um, that your function does actually terminate is not necessarily uh, simple, but um, you usually can rephrase, rephrase your function in, in those terms. And this gives you a true empty type. Um, you don't need to worry about bottom having all your types because um, bottom is non-termination of some sort, and uh, you don't get that here because everything terminates. Yeah. Um, 
And laziness. Um, you can talk about evaluation. Um, it's sort of a running joke in Agda um, that people never actually run their programs, so this doesn't really matter. But um, you typically you sort of type check it and then say, okay, well, type checked is good. Um, but it's type um, it's normal anyway. Yeah, so. It's um, it's uh, it, it could be lazy um, at runtime if you ever got around to running it. It that doesn't make a change a difference to the semantics on like laziness in Haskell if you but you might not um, force an undefined or some, or some non termination and that will actually affect your your um, your semantics because you're going to terminate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so say, say I wrote, wrote this function, and it's obviously buggy. I'm, I'm trying to have a, a natural number and sort of rounding down. And so I wrote it inductively. Um, half of 0 is 0, half of 1 is 0, and half of the successor of, the successor of an M number is half of the successor of the successor of that number. And Agda's going to say, OK, it's pink. Um, that means um, I'm not able to determine that this function terminates. You can keep running, writing functions, but uh, you can keep writing code, and you can even run this, but it might not actually terminate when you run it. And obviously, in this case, it won't because it's buggy. Um, and the way it, it, it's heuristic is basically it sees that I'm pattern matching on two constructors here. And I have two constructors here. And it says, well, I can't see that two constructors is smaller than two constructors. So um, I can't say that it halts for certain. I mean, it, it might actually help. Um, this one obviously doesn't. Um, but it has no way of figuring that out. So it's heuristic is basically saying, if I see fewer constructors in a recursive call, um, it could, this could be mutual recursion. Um, it, it's smart enough to figure that out. If I see fewer uh, constructors in a recursive call, I'm going to say I can see this halting at some point. Yeah? Uh, so you said that lets you run a program that's potentially about terminating and sort of this pink warning. Yeah. Um, but if you use such a term yeah. Um, does it explode horribly, or does it actually force evaluation of the evidence that um, in, in anything in the type, if you try to run this in, in, in any type that Agda actually needs to figure out at, at compile time, it's uh, it's going to just uh, uh, hang the compiler, the type track. Okay, so yes. it's, it's safe in the sense that you're not going to actually write unsafe course by writing a non No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's, not that you'll be able to use it runtime. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, so... Um, so obviously we'd want to fix this buggy function by simply, uh, you know, we want to recurse on n and put a successor in front of it. And that will appease it because it sees, well, the two, it got structurally smaller and we're only calling on the end there. And so, um, yeah, this passes the termination check.